Now this is the largest sitting statue of Buddha in the world. With these flowers in my hand, I'm about to greet the PM of Bhutan, Dr. Lote Shering. And this interview is going to be iconic in this iconic site. And there he is. Thank you, sir. Yes, Mr. Ramesh, very <laughs> nice meeting you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you very much. This flower in this environment is a testimony that we are living in a very peaceful and green country. <laughs> Good. I can give it to my wife as a gift from you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Please, sir, have a seat. It's a great moment because I have with me the Honorable PM of Bhutan, Dr. Lothe Shering. Sir, pleasure to have you with us. And I'm going to straight away start with the question. You are the PM of the happiest and the peaceful place in the world. How do you feel about it? Well, I mean, thank you. I think as I have shared my opinion with many, uh, to be part of uh, this Bhutanese community itself is a pride for any human being, I, I would say. And uh, to be given this opportunity to head the government of Royal Government of Bhutan, I think uh, it makes a uh, um, lot of difference uh, to anyone's life. Of mm -hmm. course, an absolute uh, um, pleasure for me to be to be uh, honored to to take this position. So thank you very much for uh, uh, coming to Bhutan to meet us. Yeah, definitely because I also feel that you know since the time I've landed here, mm -hmm. I'm hearing my own breath and I'm hearing all the thoughts which otherwise go lost in the sound. The decibel levels definitely are less and people seem to be very happy and cheerful. And to meet a PM without any security at such short notice is itself shows that how connected you are with the people. And I've been told that you move around an electric vehicle yourself, cycle, bike, football, all of that. And you're a doctor uh, and the PM of the country. I mean, all of that into one. Yeah, I mean, uh, see, I don't know. I don't any know how... rule book that you have that you follow? which perhaps the leaders of states can understand or take a leaf from? Uh, no, 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 because I don't mean to uh, impose my habits on anyone, mm -hmm. not even to my family members and my children. Uh, no, because I have no capacity to uh, instruct or preach anyone. Of course, I can share uh, my inner feelings and I can share with you how I feel. Uh, you referred to... Uh, to me as, a, as the PM and a surgeon and somebody who drives around uh, in an EV or an e-bike or a mountain bike. Yes, I do all those. All those because of my inner passion towards this. I believe in it. I go a lot on my uh, mountain bike uh, cycle because uh, that gives me a lot of uh, pleasure, mm -hmm. keeps me engaged, keeps me physically challenged so that I become mentally fit. Uh, as you rightly said, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor. Not just a medical doctor, uh, but a very passionate one. I care about the health of everyone. Then uh, with that mindset, after I uh, became Prime Minister, I carry the same mindset forward. Uh, nothing has changed in me. Uh, I mean, you are mentioning as uh, being able to meet me in the shortest possible time. In fact, I'm, I'm honored to be meeting you. I mean, oh, that's Ram an absolute Mr. Honor. Ramesh is no small guy. <laughs> uh, I've been following you on your social media platform and you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, the PM, I mean, Bhutan is the greenest country in the world. How do you think this will continue? I mean, what are the steps? Is there are some, are some steps which have been taken psychologically or by design or by default? Yeah, I mean, greenest country in the world, that's absolutely correct. Uh, our constitution mandates us to keep at least 60% of the country under forest cover. Mm -hmm. That's a constitutional mandate. But currently we have uh, roughly over 72% of the country under forest cover. Okay. And furthermore, more than 50% of these forest cover right now, more than 50% is further legally protected as biological corridors, life, uh, wildlife sanctuaries. So these are, these are extra legal boost and, 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 and uh, assurance that we will forever be as green or, 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 uh, or even better, I would say. So yes, I, I'll absolutely be happy to accept that we are one of the greenest countries in the world. Also, you export like a lot of hydro electricity, which is also very pure because it's not burning coal and everything. So, does do you take? You have more plans to be in that space? Like that's I, the biggest export, I believe. Oh yes, yes, that is one of our main uh, revenue earner, uh, hydropower um, uh, export of hydropower, and mainly to India actually. Mm -hmm. um, and our, you know that hydropower is also renewable energy. Sure. It is very very clean, but with uh, uh, very unpredictable. Uh, uh, 
climate change happenings around uh, it's not very easy to be uh, very confident in the hydropower sector. Sure. So uh, yes, uh, we have a lot of pride, we have huge potential in hydro sector, but uh, I think renewable, other sources of renewable energy is picking up. So we are mindful of that as of today, we are happy with our revenue generated from hydropower, which is renewable and green. All the electric charging stations that I've been to with my drive around is are free. Yes. Is that going to remain? Uh, oh yes, yes. Oh yes. As because uh, ultimately uh, the, the nation or the state uh, stand to benefit. So right now we have charging stations in almost all uh, major districts of the country. Mm -hmm. Few corners we have not reached because we really don't have EVs uh, in those areas. And we are not going to wait for the public to buy EVs and reach there. We will have charging stations all over so that that in itself will be an uh, encouragement for them to buy. On that note, luxury electric vehicles like Mercedes EQB which we are driving are not apparently in Bhutan. You think presence of having them brings up the aspirational factor or do you think this will push the rich to buy, move to uh, EV and... Yeah, I'm sure yes because... inspire uh, others rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, of course uh, overall living standard of Bhutanese by and large are not really within that range but we do have 10-15% of the population who can easily afford to buy those. You know, um, Mercedes CQB has just come out in the market. Right. I'm sure it will be uh, an attraction for many Bhutanese to come. And as you rightly said, with those uh, emerging in our local market, we'll also encourage more to come. Often that will be very good because it will be driven by prominent figures who can actually uh, move the masses. I'm very hopeful of that. Since 2018, since you've become the PM, sir, what has changed in the EV landscape? How much has changed? And what's going to happen in the next? I think you can, uh, I don't know how to put it, but uh, I can divide into two. Mm -hmm. Change uh, in the EV culture, I would say change of mindset and changes that has physically taken place. On the mindset, a huge inroad. Now every family, every uh, educated uh, Bhutanese is already talking about uh, owning an EV. So uh, in the mindset, huge change. But in physical, uh, we would have liked to have more progress. Yet we have made significant uh, uh, achievements. There are, uh, in the last three years, I think we are seeing almost about 500 EVs uh, on our roads. 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, between private versus uh, public owned. And we have charging stations, as I said, in every corner of the country. And that's absolutely free. Uh, EVs are absolutely tax-free, zero mm -hmm. tax. And we also have some incentives uh, for public transport sector to uh, uh, participate. Uh, for regular cars, we don't give that much loan, but for EV, we give almost 70% uh, loan. And then uh, almost up to 20% in public sector, we give some sort of grant. So the, the buyers will have to chip in only 10% okay. upfront. So these are initial uh, incentives that we would like to attract them with. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, absolutely sure that we need not uh, incentivize with cash incentives. We will incentivize them with the right narrative, that narrative so that they come on it full board. That's a very well said because that's sustainable, that's yes, other is yes, not sustainable. Yes. I always believe that uh, the moment we, we uh, start uh, incentivizing with money or cash, it doesn't work. Yeah, when that's plugged is taken, they no. move back to the... We do it only if, uh, if uh, that element is not too good to sell or be sold by itself. EV is it's the technology of the day. It's a thought also. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's renewable energy, it's friendly. It's not just for yourself, but for the community, for your next generation. And that is the buzzword nowadays. Okay. I'm just uh, not too sure of how long will the EV era remain, because hydrogen sector is already emerging very strongly. Right. So, which is again another good news. Yeah, so, sure. Uh, we know for sure, I'm absolutely sure fossil fuel is now uh, Thing of the past. Yes, absolutely. Is Bhutan doing something for embracing hydrogen? Uh, yes, we have a, through uh, Economic Affairs Ministry and few experts, uh, we are drafting a hydrogen energy roadmap. Okay. Yes. So have we done much? Not really, but in again in terms of thought processes and acceptance, we are already on to that. And Bhutan is the first country in the world to be carbon negative. Mm -hmm. Do you think that can sustain oh, the yes, next five years? Absolutely. Absolutely. The main, main reason why we are carbon negative is because of our 72% forest coverage. Mm -hmm. Our forest sinks almost three times more than uh, greenhouse gas that we emit. So uh, that, will, that will actually be better in the uh, long run. And then we are, uh, as I said, uh, 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 exporting uh, uh, 
uh, electric hydro 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 electric power which is also offsetting a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emitted by our neighboring 11 country India. We also have a good plans to uh, tap renewable energy, especially from the sun. Mm -hmm. See, we enjoy this for next five months. Exactly. Absolutely clear sky for next five, six months. And this we, conversation in this environment, it's itself so nice. Yeah. yeah, so I I feel happy to see this. At the same time, I feel a little uh, um, sad and disappointed to see this because we are not able to tap this energy. Okay. We can tap this. Solar. Yeah, it's not just for visual uh, comfort, but there's a huge potential energy being untapped. Uh -huh. So we can tap it and use it. Do you have Which a big is, export for... Uh, Natural resources, like you export a lot? Uh, yes, not a lot, but the little that we have, we export. Again, we export maximum to India. Maximum to India. Yeah. India is a good trading oh, partner. It's a huge country. Uh, we are so happy that we have a huge market with India. So Correct. I think 90% of the exports is to India now. Almost, a little more than 90%. Earlier it was 75%. It's yes. gone up. Yes. And it's going up because the demand in India is rising. And right. that's all we want. Good market. <laughs> Reliable <course>. market. <laughs> so what are the other things about the PM that the country and the world doesn't know, which you want to share a few things, whether it's for leadership, whether it's for books that you read, whether you I listen mean, to podcasts. Not, nothing much on that. I can. I, I know that you watch BBC Top Gear and exhibit both. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, see, uh, with time, people need to diversify your thoughts. People need to be open. And uh, if you want to sell an idea, you must also be smart enough to sell it in a manner that the buyers want it. Uh, Top Gear is one excellent idea. And yourself, I uh, briefly read through your CV and very innovative. Thank you so See, much. you're already reaching out to more masses, masses of your uh, age group that appeal to the, 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 the needs of the hour. So I think these are little things that we all have to be mindful of. If you feel that you know everything, then that's, that's the time where you go wrong. If you know that, you, if you feel that what you're doing is right, if you feel that, that you must be heard, if you feel that you must, uh, everyone must listen to you, I think that is where we go wrong. Uh, we must always have the open mind. If there's any differences in opinion, I'm ever ready to change my opinion and get that other's view. So a lot of these guys who are watching you right now are auto enthusiasts, young guys. Any thoughts and message do you want to give them for their life abandonment? Good question. I, again, I said I. I know you don't want to give I, your. I can only share my views. Please. I have absolutely no mandate exactly. in asking others only to follow. Views, only yeah, views. Only views. I think uh, many people around the globe will make uh, uh, New Year resolutions. New yes. Year pledges. Uh, <laughs> That's the trending word. The, That's the trend. Days. But uh, many of these people who very enthusiastically uh, come up to make New Year resolutions uh, will actually stop thinking about even before uh, the New Year has uh, New Year celebrations have finished. You know, my only my only take, which I always do, uh, is uh, to make absolutely sure that you remain healthy, yeah. health as in physical health. You make sure that uh, you have a good set of diet, good set of personal habits that you have to follow so that others see it starting as simple as uh, your say body bmi if you are healthy then whatever you do will be healthy if you're physically fit whatever you view all your vision visual field will become healthy so that would be my personal um, uh, pledge that i would make and i will continue to follow that in governance i think uh, my only wish is uh, you may not have realized, but uh, Bhutan as a whole is going through uh, major reforms. Okay. Reform in every public sector, civil service reform, financial sector reform, banking sector, as I said, um, private sector reform. All the SOEs were reforming because uh, we, must, uh, we must be ready for any change. We must be willing to take the challenges of the new world, that is 21st century. Pandemic has taught us a very good lesson that uh, we have come a long way. What we had, doing, uh, had been doing is good, but not good enough to uh, take Bhutan forward. So we are going through massive reforms, and I only wish that this reform takes a very good effect, and Bhutan become uh, Bhutan becomes uh, different in the soonest possible time. I think Bhutan is a very great country in my personal sense, and with your leadership, it's done a great thing in keeping that strive alive. It was amazing having you with us for this channel. It was amazing conversation and heartfelt uh, gratitude because I don't think any PM would be so cool to sit 
under the sun, under this Buddha statue, jog up the stairs and talk, heart out, everything. This is not scripted, guys. If you like this, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Whatever the PM has said means a lot. And we can't thank you enough, sir. Thank you so much for your time.